There is a real problem facing our young people. You may be thinking drugs, alcohol, social disorders, or maybe even just pure apathy. All of these are right, but I see another problem facing our young people in classrooms across America. The problem is, teachers are struggling to give up control of their classroom. <laughs> That's right. Teachers need to give up control of their classroom. Let's think about it. These students are only two, maybe three years away from making decisions that are not only going to affect their life, but also your life and the future of our country. As teachers, we need to be facilitating and guiding their decisions, not trying to dictate them. So what exactly does a student-led classroom look like? Well, let me tell you a little bit about how mine came to be. A couple of years ago, I had the unique responsibility of raising a lot of money really quickly, which isn't something typically found in the job description of a teacher. <laughs> But you know teachers. We'll do just about anything for the good of our students. So when two of my students qualified to attend a national leadership conference, I was determined not to let the lack of funding keep them from going. I sat down with my students and we began to brainstorm ideas of how in the world were we going to raise so much money in such a short amount of time. As typical teenagers, their ideas kept revolving around music. They wanted to have a concert, so I agreed. This was the first step towards establishing a student-led classroom, allowing students to make real decisions. <laughs> As a high school marketing teacher, I knew very little about organizing a concert. Actually, let me be honest. I knew absolutely nothing about organizing a concert. <laughs> But I knew we probably needed a band, right? So one afternoon, I emailed every band and booking manager that I could find. But as the responses started to come in, I got very discouraged because I kept receiving no after no and several unaffordable quotes. But then one morning, on my way to work, I got an email, a very unexpected email. And in that email, there were a few stipulations. It had to be a real rock concert. Lights out, standing room only, full production, and of course, a smoke machine. <laughs> But what really grabbed my attention was the four-letter F word, free. I'm pretty sure I didn't even read the entire email before I responded with a yes, let's do it. Now keep in mind, I was a first-year teacher with a first-year career tech director and a first-year superintendent. <laughs> to say I was nervous would be a vast understatement, but I knew this was a huge opportunity for my students. You see, I've always been the type of teacher who likes to incorporate real-world experiences into my classroom. But if you've ever tried to talk a business into letting teenagers run their marketing campaign, you would know just how difficult of a task that actually is. But this was different. You see, that lead singer who said yes, he shares the same passion as I do. And that's positively impacting the lives of young people. And <laughs> our first conversation, we discussed ways in which my students could get involved in the planning and promoting process of the concert. And what began as a simple fundraiser quickly turned into the ultimate project-based learning experience. This was the second step towards establishing a student-led classroom allowing students to, gain, to experience real consequences based on their real decisions. Unfortunately, this is not something that you're going to find in a traditional classroom. Yes, project-based learning is a hot trend in education right now, but most projects in the classroom are hypothetical. They involve fake businesses with fake customers, and it does allow students to make real decisions but there's no real consequences or rewards. So you can imagine 
why this opportunity was so exciting for my students. And we only had four short weeks until the concert day. So my students had to get busy really quickly. They identified the target market. They developed marketing strategies. They analyzed social media data and participated in every aspect of concert operations. When, fin when the concert day finally arrived, I can't even begin to tell you the energy and excitement that was on our school campus. And my marketing students, I think they were still in disbelief that this concert that they had worked so hard to plan and promote was actually about to happen. But me? I was a complete mess. <laughs> On one hand, I couldn't wait for my students to reap the rewards of their hard work. On the other hand, I was terrified. My first and only year of teaching was about to be my last. <laughs> but it was perfect. The concert was absolutely perfect. The students screamed in excitement, they danced with their friends, and they got to look around the room and see the efforts of their hard work pay off. Their peers and their classmates were enjoying something that they created. Talk about a sense of accomplishment. It was truly remarkable. And not only did these students gain content knowledge, they also gained real-world experience that they could put on their resume. This was the third step towards establishing a student-led classroom allowing students to gain real benefits. Yes, knowledge is important, but so is teamwork, communication, networking, and problem-solving skills. Honestly, these are more important because these skills are necessary for success in any career path the student chooses. And these soft skills, they can't be learned from a textbook or assessed on a multiple choice test. But as incredible as this was, it still wasn't the best part. You see, when the concert was over and we were cleaning up the gym, packing away the equipment, I noticed something. A few students had lingered behind. Now, these are students that I never dreamed would get involved in this project. You know the ones. They sit in the back of the classroom, turn in just enough assignments to barely squeak by. They're oftentimes overlooked by teachers, and you can tell they're struggling to find their place in life. But I noticed a change in these students, in one student in particular. A few months prior to the concert, I had noticed a creative talent within him that was unmatched by any other I had seen before. So as the concert approached, I asked him if he would film the events of the concert, and this small opportunity gave him purpose, something he desperately needed. And he came into my classroom on the first day of his senior year, just a few months after the concert, and volunteered to give his introduction presentation first. He would have never done this just a few months prior. In fact, he went on to film various events throughout his senior year and graduated this past May with a newfound confidence that will take him to places he never dreamed possible, all because of a small opportunity. And he is only one of the many lives that I have witnessed changed forever, simply because they were given an opportunity. This is the final step in establishing a student-led classroom, allowing students to explore opportunities, opportunities to find their passion and build their confidence, opportunities for students to step outside of their comfort zone and explore a path they never knew existed, opportunities to use their creativity and show off their talents, but most importantly, opportunities for them to thrive in their own skin. As for the lead singer who took a risk and said yes, he too was mind blown. In fact, he stopped me as the last of his equipment was loaded on the truck 
And he and I both knew that this concept of a student-led classroom had to be replicated. And it was in that very moment that a partnership, an unlikely partnership, between a rock star and a teacher began. And Reach and Teach was born. Reach and Teach is now a nonprofit educational program that provides a real solution to a real problem. It pushes educators to give up control of their classroom and provide students with real decisions, real consequences, real benefits, and real opportunities. On track to reach nearly 8,000 students this upcoming school year, Reach and Teach shows no signs of stopping because education needs to see a change. How do I know that? According to a 2017 Gallup survey, 52% of those surveyed are dissatisfied with public education in the United States. And this isn't a recent development. For the past 15 years, there has been a higher percentage of those dissatisfied than those who are satisfied with public ed education. I think it's time we need new leaders in education, but not politicians, not administrators, not even teachers. I firmly believe that we need to allow students to become leaders of their own education. Thank you.